Assalamu alaikum. Rodi here to remind you that every time you lie to somebody, you're taking away their choice. You're taking away the ability for them to make a decision that's good for themselves. And that's why I always lie to the people of the global minority and men. <laughs> I made a video about black women and preventative protection and how if you want someone to protect you, you're going to have to listen to them and try to avoid being in dangerous situations. And because you guys didn't like what I said, I received death threats. People wish that someone would bust my car window and pistol with me. People wish that some people or that they themselves could find me and hit me with a brick. All these young girls that are out here that are still wet behind the ears but are aging like milk and bananas calling me old. I'm not expecting y'all to be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that because I know y'all don't care. But I'm gonna say what I want regardless because I don't receive my self-worth and validation based on what people say about me online. I proudly grew up in a time before all of that and my self-worth and validation is based on my principles and my character. Some of y'all wouldn't know nothing about that. So I'll say this again for the people that have sense, preventative protection is the best kind of protection. So Urban Dictionary defines a pick me as a woman that is willing to do anything for male approval. She will embarrass or throw other women under the bus to achieve this goal. The unfortunate thing about a pick me is usually the men that they are trying to seek approval from are of poor quality and treat women badly, leaving little benefit for the pick me. You know, I, I actually agree with this definition of a pick me. However, I think we've been using the term too loosely. Right. So in my estimation, like a male version of a pick me is that that homeboy who always tries to play fight or he always tries to joke with you by insulting you when women are around. Right? He wants to joan. He wants to talk about how he beat you in arm wrestling five years ago, only when women come around. And, you know, obviously, I think there are female examples of that. Maybe it's the, the girl who similarly. Uh, talks about how your makeup looks bad or how your dress might look bad uh, when other men are around to make herself look better or make herself look like the authority while bringing you down. But like I said, I think, unfortunately, because of social media, because of a lot of these conversations being had by stupid people, we throw the term around loosely, right? Now, if a woman has the audacity to agree with men, she's a pick me. If a girlfriend or a wife has the audacity to treat her man with respect or with reverence or with consideration, she's a pick me. And I think it just exemplifies how far away from logic and how far away from community mindedness we have strayed as a community. And to the ladies who have never had a man love them enough to try to prevent something bad from happening to them, you honestly have my sincere condolences. And to those of you who say, why don't you just tell men to stop abusing women? Why don't we hold them accountable? If telling someone to stop being an abuser, a thief, or a murderer worked, then the prisons, we wouldn't have a need for prisons. None of that would exist. So excuse me for living in the real world. I'm a very proactive kind of person. We can't change what happened in the past or things that have already happened to women, but we could help minimize the risk of those things happening in the future. Ultimately, when it comes to the archetype of women that we see, it boils down to who are we incentivizing with our attention? Unfortunately, as men, we are visual, we're sexual. So our priorities tend to be visual and sexual. And those women are not always reasonable and intelligent. So that's how you see the Carly Russells. That's how you see you know, the, the bride who refused to say her, her full vows. That's how you see the woman on the ultimatum, the, uh, one of my last case studies. Because ultimately, some idiot dude, because maybe she looked good or maybe she coerced you into a relationship that now you can't get out of, is incentivizing her behavior and is ultimately incentivizing that behavior at large because other Carly Russells, other women like Roe reacts will now see that, well, it doesn't matter how bad behaved I am. It doesn't matter if I lie, if I cheat, if I steal, there will be people to jump to my aid, jump to my rescue because they have to fulfill this desire to keep black women in that perpetual victim role with no nuance and no discussion about 
certain ways that we make our lives harder, certain ways that we put ourselves in harm's way. We just want to focus on how it's other people's responsibility to keep us safe. The fact that nobody is questioning the fact that this woman deleted her TikTok. I know the world coming to an end now because I just seen a white woman come to a black men's rescue. And they rescued us from the tyranny of black women. I never thought I'd see today. It's, it's crazy. And what's really sad is that ain't now one of these women that bashed us going to get on the internet and make an apology. Because they are scared of the word accountability. They don't want to hold nothing accountable but black men. We the reason for everything. You know, now it's coming out that it's a it's a hoax. There was no guy with a brick. I've heard some people say she injected herself a saline solution. I've heard other people say it's a it's an allergic reaction. I've seen a clip from 2020 where something similar happened. Apparently she was beaten up, according to her, because she wants to be a doctor. Regardless, I think it boils down to we as men are giving these problematic ass women, the audacity to move the way that they move. And when I see some of the men, I saw them on uh, social media. When I did a stream, I, I had one conversation with the brother who insisted that every woman is deserving of protection. This whole narrative that which I'm embarrassed about is really stooped in fear. And I believe more of Black men saying, oh, I told you so. Because look at her Instagram and so forth and so on. It's just justification. It really paints a picture of how insidious this thing is and how we don't realize that our actions, our defense is incentivizing counterproductive and problematic behavior. I remember when I posted the mugshot of Carly Russell, some of the comments that I got were, damn, but she's pretty though. She looked good, though. She's cute. And unfortunately, there's going to be some idiot dude, because Carly might be thick or he might think she's pretty, who's going to wife her up. That's the reality. And as long as that continues to happen, as long as we continue to incentivize nonsense women, we will continue to see nonsense women. And I say the same thing about men, right? As long as fuckboys keep getting pussy, there's no reason for them to stop. There's no amount of accountability holding from other men that's going to change that. Similarly, there's no amount of crimson cures that's going to change the fact that these women are problematic because there's going to be another guy who's ready and willing to protect her, to provide for her, and to tell her that she's not the problem everybody else is. What breaks my heart about this Ro React situation is that uh, she's a mother. She's a mother of a boy, and only God knows how he's going to grow up. Only God knows what his outlook is going to be on women. And unfortunately, you know, as boys, we don't get to, to say our mothers were terrible. I know that firsthand because a clip of me talking about it hypothetically is getting me dragged on Instagram. But again, women like Ro Reacts are raising some of these boys. And we only focus on the damage that those boys inevitably end up doing to other women. We don't focus on the women who caused the original damage to those boys. And even when we do that, we still have to talk about whatever happened to her that made her such a terrible woman, human being, and mother. And it's time we start adding some context to this conversation. Is the reason why we have to decenter men is because they low-key don't like being respected. They don't like it when you're nice to them. They don't like it when you like them. They don't like it when you prioritize them. They like it when you feel nonchalant about them. They want to seek your validation. They want to seek your approval. That's usually when they put in the effort, pursue you, and treat you the best. We're having conversations, or at least I'm seeing conversations being had about decentering men, right? You, you see a lot of people on TikTok, women, feminists talking about you know, decentering men, which is basically not conforming to the male gaze, right? So like women have been saying for a number of years now, we don't get dressed for y'all. We don't put on makeup for y'all. We don't do anything basically for y'all. A couple of years ago, women refused to shave their armpits and it was a sign of rebellion, right? They were rebelling against the patriarchy and the oppressive nature of the male gaze and, 
you know, man, men's beauty expectations. We're not going to do any of the things that we used to do to make ourselves presentable to you. However, we still expect every single privilege that we used to enjoy and more. Right. I, I expect you to continue to do your job. And do some of my job, but I, I don't expect anything from me. And this is this is where we are. Right. So it's OK for random black men who didn't want to jump into this fictitious uh, uh, <laughs> brawl, I guess, in defense of a black woman. It's OK for them to be dragged. And I'm not seeing anybody coming out and apologizing to black men at large or black men at the event. Now that it's coming out that this is uh, made up. But I think ultimately, we as black men, we have to look at ourselves. And, you know, during the live stream that I did, um, I wanted to kind of get into uh, what I what I call the protection paradox, right? Because protection doesn't happen for free. Protection is a privilege. It's not a right. And everything comes with a cost, right? For instance, Part of how the government protects us is that it's constantly surveilling um, the internet. It's constantly surveilling phone lines. It's constantly surveilling streets for potential threats, right? Is, is this guy wearing a, a suicide vest, right? We, we, we're constantly being surveilled. The cost of that is privacy. The benefit is protection. And the only way to get protection without sacrificing your privacy is to be in charge of your own protection. But in these conversations, we're not having or adding that nuance to it. The only thing or person that can protect you is somebody who you are under their jurisdiction. Because sometimes protection isn't overt jumping out and jumping in the middle of, sometimes it's guidance. And if I can't guide you, I can't protect you. And I'm disappointed that men aren't adding that to the conversation. I'm disappointed that women aren't adding that to the conversation. As we saw, Erica Lachey was being dragged on the internet simply because she made that point. Simply because she had the audacity to say that how women protect men is to make sure they're not putting themselves in situations where those men might have to risk their freedom or their lives in defense of her. But in today's world where, as a woman, I wanna enjoy all the privileges with none of the responsibility, we're not willing to have these conversations. And it really ticks me off when I see these dudes on the internet, these quote unquote woke dudes, these, uh, liberal guys like consciously refusing or maybe just ignorant to the nuance and the additional context that's necessary when talking about things like protection. Because in real life, it doesn't work like that. It's, just, it's not until you have to consider, would I want my son patrolling the streets like Batman? Before you take a step back and realize that, oh, it's not that simple that just random men should jump at the defense of random women, despite that woman's behavior prior to or during an altercation. And what's funny, what's hilarious is some of these same people who were pissed off at imaginary black men for not protecting this woman in her fictitious story have been threatening a woman who they've labeled as a pick me, they've been threatening her, her safety. They've been hoping that bad things happen to her. And it really just shows and demonstrates the hypocrisy of some of this pseudo liberalism, this nonsensical feminism. And the fact that we adopt these blanket statements, protect black women, defund the police, black lives matter, and we don't talk about some of the complexities, some of the nuances, some of the layers of these things, it demonstrates our ignorance and it actually demonstrates our unwillingness to actually truly confront and solve these problems because we'd rather just bitch and moan and hope other people solve it 
without even considering if they are incentivized to. Ultimately, I don't know if this is a hoax. There's a lot of evidence that suggests and supports that it is. But in this culture of Carly Russell's, of this potential hoax, things are going to get bad. And unfortunately, I think things are going to get bad for our sisters because now when something actually happens, when there actually is a Carly Russell that's honestly been abducted, there actually is a Rory X who's honestly been assaulted because she didn't give a man her number, our reflex is going to be, are we sure? And I think women in particular should be more angry at these women than anybody else. I think black women in particular should be more angry than anybody else because these women and their actions are setting women back. And if we refuse to acknowledge it because we would rather take another opportunity to talk about how men are, aren't this or aren't that, unfortunately, it's women who are going to get hurt. The ex to the brick lady witness has spoke out and allegedly he, it happened in Houston. She say he lives in Nashville. He never was in Houston. And he did all of that talking, making up that story for clicks, likes, and views. All I'm going to say is the club owner, it's an audio of talking to the club owner. And he says none of, none of that stuff happened. He got camera footage. And he said his security is out there 24-7, and he is.